Hi guys, Lily here. I'd like to talk to you about granny squares. Today's video is a little bit different from my usual video. I won't be teaching you how to make a specific item, but hopefully you will still learn a few new things. And if you're an expert and you know it all, I will be putting up lots of photographs of gorgeous granny squares. So you will have beautiful crochet to admire. Recently, I was so inspired by an event called Granny Square Day, which was hosted on Instagram by Simply Crochet Magazine. Thousands of crocheters from all over the world flooded Instagram with photographs of granny squares they've been working on. I spent more time than I care to admit to just scrolling through and looking at as many photos as I possibly could. And I came away from Granny Square Day with granny squares on the brain. And while I was looking at all those photos, I just kept thinking, I don't think you see this level of variety on YouTube. If you're learning to crochet and YouTube is your teacher, if you don't venture off this platform or do some really serious searches, I think you could be left unaware of how exciting granny squares can actually be. And even if you're an experienced crocheter, I think you could be surprised by what's out there. Granny squares can be so much more than a traditional, plain, easy crochet. So enough of me chatting. I'd like to give you a little idea of what is out there by going to my Instagram and looking at the Granny Square Day 2022 hashtag and showing you what's on offer. In a bit, I'm gonna show you some of my personal favorites, but for now, I just want you to get an idea of the scope. There's so much that it's hard to take in. Let me know in the comments if there's one or two or three that catches your eye in particular. There are a lot of normal cluster granny squares. I've got a soft spot for a cluster granny square. I particularly like a scrap granny square blanket with that interesting range of colors you end up with when you try to use up the yarn you already own. Squares made following more basic patterns can still be really eye-catching and special. It's in the colour choices. There is such a range of colour schemes here. Everything from dark colours to understated muted tones. Really bright and vibrant colours. Pastels. Even some fluoros. Some of the squares have lots of colour changes. And some squares are made with just one colour. And the designs. Some are incredibly elegant and intricate and detailed. There are lots of flowers. There are some really whimsical ones that are just so quirky and fun. There are lots of animals. There's food. What do you think? Did you see anything that you felt really drawn to or that was new to you? If you're a beginner, you're possibly thinking, there is no way I could make a square like that. And there's some truth in that. They're really mind-blowing squares. They don't tend to be beginner-friendly patterns. But stick with me because there are some ways that you can take a beginner-friendly pattern and make it a little bit more special. There are some genuinely beginner-friendly options for making more interesting or more beautiful granny squares. But I will get to that. For now, I just want to check that you're feeling inspired. I'll get to the practicalities in just a moment. So after granny square day, I certainly did feel inspired. I was really drawn to the floral blocks. I hadn't thought about floral blocks in ages and I came away from it and made this one. It's the D-Rust Square designed by Jen Tyler of the Floral Hook. I've put a link to the pattern in the description box. It's a paid pattern, but it's not expensive. Now that you know how interesting granny squares can be, let's have a look at what's on offer on YouTube. If I just search for granny squares, let's see what comes up. Now everybody's YouTube searches are unique to them. So what I get in my search is not necessarily going to be exactly the same as what you would get if you did exactly the same search. My first few search results are pretty basic, but if I keep scrolling down, there are a few in here that look more interesting, but I am seeing what I expected. There just isn't anything like the range that I saw on Granny Square Day. If you're a beginner and YouTube is your teacher, search results like these might make you think that you've done Granny Squares once you've learned to make a standard cluster, a solid granny, a circle in a square, a flower square, a mitered square, you'd think you'd exhausted the possibilities and then you'd probably move on. There's nothing here that looks like the floral block I made. There's nothing here in that fun, bright, quirky style that we saw a bit of under the granny square day hashtag. Possibly you're thinking that it isn't a fair comparison. My search term wasn't great and YouTube just doesn't work the same way as Instagram. But that's actually kind of my point. So I'm gonna sound like Captain Obvious. YouTube will teach you to do anything, but you have to tell it exactly what you want to learn. 
So you need to look for crochet inspiration away from YouTube. You need to look at Instagram or Pinterest or even just do some Google image searches, look at some crochet magazines, get an idea of the true scope of crochet and then come back to YouTube and say, teach me to make, I don't know, a frog granny square. I don't know whether there is a video on frog granny squares, but if you know that you want to find one, you'll put that in your search terms and it's much more likely to come up, whereas you will never get a frog granny square from a search term that just says granny squares. You're going to get really traditional, really basic beginner granny squares. There's actually a much bigger range of granny squares on YouTube than the search results I showed you earlier indicate. But I found that as soon as you put the term granny square into your search, you tend to end up with search results that have a lot of beginner videos in them and concentrate mainly on the traditional granny squares. You would need some really specific search terms like, more well, like frog, if you're looking for a frog square obviously got frogs on the brain. Um, but I do spend quite a lot of time on YouTube, as you might have guessed, and I do love crochet, which you definitely know. So let me show you a couple of my favorite, slightly more interesting granny squares that have video tutorials. First of all is my absolute favorite, Hooked by Robin's series of videos for the Unicorn Dreams Blanket Crochet Along. Look at this pastel, whimsical awesomeness. It's nothing like a standard granny square. It really is gorgeous. Some of these are a lot harder than others. Some of them aren't really that hard at all. Another option for um, a really big range of granny square video tutorials is a channel called Yarn Utopia by Nadia. And this channel has 365 granny square patterns, all nicely arranged in a playlist for you. So that is one granny square for every day of the year. There are definitely some beginner friendly squares in this. They're not all beginner friendly, but there's a bigger range than you saw in my earlier search results. I like to think of granny squares as stepping stones because there is such a huge range of granny squares that there is always a pattern for your skill level and usually for your style and taste as well. So you can move gradually up through granny squares, improving your crochet skills and always making something that you actually like. So now I've hopefully got you feeling interested in granny squares. I'd like to go back to Instagram, to granny square day and show you in more detail some of my favorite squares from granny square day. But I'm sorry, this time around, I'm not just gonna show you the photos and let you admire, I'm going to talk at you because I think that these particular squares offer a really good way for me to explain how you could improve your own squares and how you might like to gradually improve your crochet technique if you're a beginner. So let's have a look at this first one here. The pattern is called Queenie and the square is just beautiful, isn't it? There's some lovely contrast between the rounds because of the color changes. When I commented how much I loved the colors in this particular square, the crocheter told me she had used a self-striping yarn. I went back and looked again really closely and you can see that the color changes are a bit random. They don't always line up with the rounds. This is an idea that you can try even if you've only ever made one granny square before. Basically, I'm suggesting you have a go at using a yarn with built-in color changes. I wanted to show you how traditional granny squares look made with multicolor yarn. So I've worked up three different examples. This yarn is the odd end of crazy jean yarn that I had. This particular yarn actually has a red through it as well, but I didn't have any of the red left. I'd use that up. And I've joined the squares using an off-white and I think it looks really understated and nice. For this second set of squares, I can't tell you what the yarn is called because it was part of a massive parcel of yarn given to me when somebody quit crocheting and there was just this tiny little ball of it in there. And you can see it's got some interesting color changes happening in it. There's a little bit of yellow here. There's a sort of darker color that's heading towards burgundy down here. The color changes are more subtle because this yarn had very short bits of color change through it. So I've just got little tiny mottled flecks of the darker color coming through in most of the spots. 
And finally, I made this one here. Now this uses Lion Brand Landscapes yarn, which is an incredibly bright, shiny acrylic yarn. I'm not sure that I would usually use a yarn with this texture to make a granny square blanket project because this does really felt, but it gives you a really good idea of how dramatic color change yarn can look in a basic traditional granny square. When you make your first square with multicolor yarn, you can get very focused on where the color changes fall and start worrying that it's not looking good. But the more squares you do, the less it matters on an individual level and the more you'll start to see that the chaos has a little bit of order to it. And when you join your granny squares together, you can actually decide to lay them out either randomly or you could lay them out in the order that you make them. So you could see the progression of the yarn as it moves through the blanket. So if I'd had more yarn, I could have worked up four round granny squares and you'd have seen even more of the color change there. And when you do this yourself, you could work up five or even six round granny squares to get a really good look at the color changes within the yarn. And then of course you're choosing the color that you join your squares with that can really change the look of it. I've got a bit of fruit salad for you. Now these are fun, I love them. The designer named these her Tutti Fruity squares, which is the perfect name. She's made video tutorials for all of these squares. You could definitely make a blanket from these squares. That is the obvious thing to do. But I also think that if you used a sturdy cotton yarn, you could make a really lovely set of coasters. Or maybe if you made four of them, you could arrange them like an Andy Warhol print, either making the same design four times in four different colors or maybe making one of each of them. Another thing that really appeals to me about these particular designs is that the designer has created an interesting granny square that will join up perfectly with a standard cluster granny square. So you don't have to make an entire blanket out of the tutti fruity squares. You could make more of a mix and match blanket. You could make some traditional granny squares and some of the fruit ones and just scatter them through your blanket. So you've got a range of patterns there. You've got your easy, relaxing granny square crochet that if you're more experienced, you could probably do in front of the television without even thinking, mixing it with a few of these more complicated squares for a little bit of visual impact. The other thing that these squares have, which I think is fantastic, is written patterns for free available through the designer's blog. So what you could do if you don't at this stage know how to read a written pattern, you could make your first couple of squares following the video tutorial and then go to the blog, have a look at the written pattern and follow along with the written pattern just to gradually learn those skills. Next, I'd like to show you another match set of granny squares. Aren't the flowers and bees so bright and clear and cheerful? It's really eye-catching. The images are crisp and recognizable and this is not complex stuff, guys. I think these would be easier to make than the Tutti Fruity squares. They definitely fall into the beginner category if you have a close look, I think that what this is, is a square made of single crochet and then the designs have been worked onto that square of single crochet. So the white flower and the bee are cross stitched on and the yellow flower has been slip stitched using a crochet hook. These three patterns are available for free as a set. Now they're not a video tutorial, but the designer has written up the pattern in a really beginner friendly way and she's included a lot of photographs. So it's like working from a photo tutorial. If you think you're ready to take the next step and try making something without using a video tutorial, this might be a really good starting point for you. I have of course included a link to those free patterns in the description box for you. Next up we have a frog. I was talking about frogs earlier. I have a frog pattern for you. Now this is color work or grafgan or whatever you want to call it. There are so many different names for crochet techniques, particularly because we're chatting to each other from all over the world. This happy frog is such a good example of how you could, if you wanted to create a really interesting blanket. There are some gorgeous examples if you Google of blankets made by sewing together lots of this style of grafgan block to make a themed blanket. Grafganning is not technically difficult, but it is fiddly. If you'd like to give it a go, um, I have a video tutorial for a really simple mini grafgan. I've called it a grafgan granny square and it is computer game themed. It's the question mark block from the Super Mario Brothers games. It's a good one to start with because it is so simple. I've kept it to two colors and you can work just from the balls of yarn. Whereas usually when you grafgan, you have to split your balls of yarn up into multiple 
bobbins. When you've successfully made a simple one, you could move up then to a graph gown with more colors. I really enjoy making small squares, but I've made a handful of larger squares. And for me, there's just too much yarn all over the place getting twisted and don't get me started on the tails. But don't let me put you off because some people do really love this technique and you do get gorgeous, gorgeous projects made with it. I've put a link in the description box, not only to my very simple tutorial, but to the first part of a multiple part tutorial that shows you how to make graph gans in quite a lot of detail, every step from making the bobbins through to finishing off. Let's have a look at the next square now. I love the designs, but I think it was the colors that drew me to these. What do you think? These are actually part of a jacket. Before I saw these squares and before I had a look at the kimono jacket she made from them, I'd have told you that I am not a fan of granny squares as clothing. I'm definitely converted. Just wow. This crocheter has a real eye for colour and such a beautifully whimsical take on fashion. I love it. I've put a link to her Instagram profile in the description box below. And I think that if you like bright colours, you are going to enjoy having a look at what she creates. And I thought that these particular squares were such a good example of how granny squares can be. Ooh, bug. Granny squares can be so far from traditional. They can be exciting and fun and different. If you think that you don't like granny squares because you don't like what's on offer on YouTube, it's possibly because you don't like the colors that are being used in crochet tutorials. YouTubers are restricted to using colors that will film well. So you only really see a very limited color palette of yarns being used. And you might start to get the idea if you only look at YouTube and you don't look elsewhere at crochet, that those are the colors that everybody's using. And that's not the case. You can make some amazing, amazing crochet projects using very, very bright colors, which you've just seen. Or um, I've made a goth blanket or a goth themed blanket for a friend of mine and it looked fantastic too. I wish I had a photo to show you. I'll have a look and see if I can put a photo up on top of this to show you that blanket. So I don't recommend black for beginners because it is really hard to see your stitches and even for experienced crocheters it can be difficult to work on a black project at night because you can't see what you're doing. But don't feel like you have to stick to the colors that you're seeing on YouTube because they're pretty limited and you can be much more interesting than those of us who are filming what we're making. Let's have a look at the next one, a little birdhouse. The crocheter who made this square is an intermediate level crocheter and said it was a quick make and the pattern was easy to follow. But doesn't it look impressive? The pattern came from a crochet magazine. If you're looking for crochet inspiration, you might like to check out the crochet magazines on offer in your area. You might also like to have a look at the crochet books that you can find. Quite a lot of crochet books tend to end up out of print, but sometimes you can find the out of print ones in your library. I've got a couple of books on blocks and squares and I've enjoyed flicking through these, but I have to say they are more traditional than what I've seen in crochet magazines and I wonder whether that might be because of the publishing lead time. So it takes quite a long time to publish a book, obviously, whereas magazines that are published monthly or even bi-monthly or six monthly, they're going to move with the trends more. So you're going to see more of the new interesting content, which might be a little bit more like what I showed you under the Granny Square Day 2022 hashtag on Instagram. So that's another place you could look for inspiration. For the next square, it's actually a whole bunch of squares. I'd like to show you the floral blocks that I came across. Floral block is another name for this style of square and I'll lump them all in together because as you can see, they share some similarities. Floral blocks tend to be complex designs. On the whole, you are going to need to be able to read a pattern before you can make a square like this and they do tend to be intermediate or even advanced patterns, but aren't they beautiful? Seeing squares like these is good motivation to keep improving your skills. It gives you something to aim towards making. The color choices make a big difference to how these blocks end up looking. The dragonflower stained glass block is particularly eye-catching. Such bold color choices. And at the opposite end is the mimosa square. 
all done in a creamy yarn. It's beautiful too. And if you make a block in only one colour, you avoid all the tails. Or you could do what I suggested at the very beginning and make your squares in a yarn which has some colour changes built in. If you think you're ready to try your hand at a pattern like this, you can browse a site like Ravelry and see how other crocheters have rated the clarity of the pattern you're interested in trying, which will hopefully help you avoid patterns that make no sense. I've had a slight change of scenes between takes. Welcome to my bedroom. Um, my family came home and decided they actually wanted to live in the living room, which is terribly inconsiderate. Don't they know that the living room is my YouTube filming studio? <laughs> the last set of blocks that I have to show you is actually a blanket. I can't stress enough how much I love this blanket. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous and interesting. I showed it to my mum and her response was, well, it doesn't really match. I'm like, no, it doesn't really match, but every square of it is interesting. This amazing blanket was crocheted by a lady called Jo and the patterns that she used were part of a crochet along hosted in July of this year by Hobbycraft. It is so different from the traditional granny square Afghan. It's so much more interesting. Whether it's your taste or not, I don't know, but it's definitely mine. <laughs> I like that randomness. I like that quirkiness. I'll give you a closer look at the squares in this weird and wonderful blanket and make another suggestion. It's a pretty obvious one. You might like to join the occasional crochet along. Some of them are very beginner friendly and there's often some kind of pattern support or online groups associated with the event. So if you get stuck, there are people around who can help you. And there are lots of patterns from past crochet alongs floating around the internet too. So there are a lot of cows to choose from. Crochet alongs are another place you can stumble on new ideas. There is always something new to learn. Crochet is practiced in so many countries, it's likely there are lots of techniques that you've never even heard of. When you get a little outside your comfort zone, that's when you realize there are gaps in your knowledge and then you can come back to YouTube knowing what you want to learn next, having some keywords to type into the search bar. Another jump between takes and I can hear a little bit of noise in the background. So I think someone has just come home, but hopefully I can finish talking to you about granny squares before they come in and offer to make me a cup of tea. I have one final suggestion for you. Recently, a friend of mine who's been crocheting for years told me that she doesn't like granny squares. And her reason? She doesn't like the seam. You know how traditional granny squares like cluster or solid squares can have that seam or line of chains running up the middle? When you're learning to crochet, people teach you to crochet a granny square like that because it is the easiest way. And you can keep crocheting them like that if you're happy with them. There's no reason to make a granny square any harder than it has to be. But if you think you don't like granny squares because you don't like that seam, you can stop disliking granny squares because it's really easy to get rid of that seam. If you're changing colours between rounds, try using a standing double crochet. If you're sticking with the same colour, do a bit of experimenting and try a combination of these techniques. Slip stitching to start your rounds in slightly different spots, turning your squares between rounds, or using alternative starting stitches. Alternative starting stitch is an umbrella term covering a range of different ways to replace the chain of three that stands in for the first stitch of the round with something that looks more like a normal double crochet. But my suggestion isn't just these specific techniques. It's more that if you come across something in crochet that bugs you, there is almost always a workaround. So how are you feeling about granny squares now? Are you feeling a little bit more inspired? I definitely am, and I feel a bit like I'm trying to get you to join a cult. Granny Squares really can be so much fun. <laughs> Since Granny Square Day, I not only made the floral block that I showed you earlier, I made another one. Ta-da! Isn't it gorgeous? It is by KMW Designs. I also bought myself a great big bag of yarn. When I was showing you how granny squares can look made with multicolour yarn, I used my last little bit of crazy jeans yarn to do one of the demos. And I really liked how it looked. So when that yarn was on special at 40% off, I bought myself a load of it and I'm gonna make a granny square blanket using that yarn. If you're intending to start a granny square project, if I've got you feeling inspired, leave me a comment and let me know what you're thinking of making. Or you could head over to my community page and we can have a chat there. Before I sign off and start crocheting, I'd like to ask a favour. If you click the little down arrow beneath the video, you'll open up the description box and you'll see that it is stacked 
full of resources. I'm sure there'll be something in there that you find useful. These aren't paid links. I'm not getting any money from you clicking them. It's more that I've put details of all of the crocheters who let me share their photographs with you in that description box. And I'm hoping that you might head on over to their Instagram accounts or their Etsy shops or their Ravelry stores, have a look at what they have to offer, see if it inspires you as much as it did me and show them a little bit of love. And if you did enjoy this video, if it's something you'd like to see me do a little bit more of, leave me a comment and let me know. But if it's not your thing, don't worry, I am back to putting up pattern tutorials. My next video will be a pattern for a gorgeous, cozy beanie with stripes and no seam. So keep an eye out for that one. If you're looking for a project to make next and you're thinking of granny squares, it would be a really good idea to start by watching my video on the standing double crochet. So you can start your next granny square by taking it up a step and improving it, getting rid of that seam. So I'll pop a link to that up on the screen for you. I've also put a link on the screen to my playlist of quick crochet projects in case you're interested in doing something that has nothing to do with granny squares. In the meantime, keep on crocheting guys. With every project, we are putting a little bit more warmth and joy into the world and that has got to be a good thing. I'll see you next time. Bye. Excuse me for a moment. Come on in. More than traditional or... Oh, really? I've got some spinach and fairly pastries that I love. <laughs> How much but interesting. Come in. Oh, hi honey. I wanted to... Really? Baklava, would you like some? What? Oh, sure, honey, come on in. <laughs> Nick off! <laughs>